How you doing and welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna give you some tips to help you shift better. So, if you're having issues with that, stick around. All right, so this first tip, I'm gonna talk about the clutch. And it's gonna be the only tip in reference to the clutch, but it's really, that's it's one that's important. And it wasn't covered whenever I was learning how to shift. Uh, but the clutch, when you're rolling down the road, when you're actually moving, you actually only need to depress that clutch like one to two inches. It does not have to go in very far in order to slip the truck out of gear or to put it back in gear if you're double clutching, of course. Uh, when you're at a stop, then you want to depress the clutch all the way to the floor, and I mean all the way down. The clutch brake, which actually stops, which allows you to put it in gear when the truck is not in motion, that clutch brake does not engage fully until you are at the very, very bottom. So if you're having an issue getting it into gear while it's stopped, make sure one that the clutch is depressed all the way to the floor and then if you're still having issue getting in, getting it into gear at that point you might actually want to release it out a little bit and then push it back in and this will move the gates and yes there are actually gates to these gears so sometimes you can get it in the wrong spot when you're at a stop and it won't go all the way into gear, but you're not, you're not really gonna run across that too terribly much. The most important takeaway here is the clutch, when you're rolling and you're learning to double clutch and you're, you're trying to pass your test, that clutch only needs to be pushed in just very, very little in order to actually get the truck out of gear and back into gear. I know what I was trying to learn, I was trying to push that thing all the way down to the floor, each time to double clutch, and uh, that just made my life miserable, so don't do that. Now the second thing to know is that it actually does not take a lot of force in order to get the to get it out of gear and to get it back in gear, uh, especially if you're in the right RPM range to do so. Uh, so you can act, you can take it out with one finger. Uh, I know that a lot of schools will teach you, you know, to shift if you're having an issue, you're gear jamming. They're going to teach you to shift with probably three fingers on top. And all that that's really doing is, is it's trying to teach you that it does not, you do not have to force it out of gear and you do not have to force it into gear. It's more about RPM range. Which leads me directly into the next tip and that is learn the RPM range that you need to be in. Every, every engine, every transmission is different. But for the most part, the lower end gears are probably going to be separated by about 200 to 300 RPMs. And so you're gonna shift a little bit faster on the lower side. And then once you go from fifth to sixth gear, and I'm talking about a 10 speed, of course. By the way, everything is gonna be in reference to 10 speeds in this video. But when you're going from fifth to sixth or the high range, you're gonna have 400 RPMs four to five, but really it's about four, that are gonna separate your high range. And ideally, you wanna shift on the high range whenever you're, you're revving it up, you're in sixth gear and you're, you're going up, you wanna to get to about 1600 RPMs, that's when you wanna shift into seventh. And if you do it properly, it's going to, you're gonna to fall to about, about 1200 RPMs or so. And that's a general rule of thumb on flatland, but I'll get into that in a little in, in one of the future tips. But something of notes, I have another video and I will I'll put it in the description. I'll put it down as the pinned comment down below. And after this video is over, you can refer to that. Matter of fact, I'll put it on the end screen. I, in one of my other shifting videos, I teach you very specifically how to shift by RPMs. It's a very important skill. It's one that you're gonna wanna learn. So make sure you definitely check that out. And now's a good time to say, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Uh, in a future video coming up, uh, I'm gonna teach you guys how to float. So make sure you've got the notification bell turned on so that way you are notified whenever that video drops. And another tip, and this is gonna be kind of how the old hands learn to, uh, to drive. An old hand is an older driver, one that's been around for a while. Uh, they actually learn to listen to the engine. 
That way you don't necessarily have to watch your RPMs or watch your speedometer and you know, that, that way you can shift by listening. That you're not taking your eyes off the road in that case. And if you're in kind of a hairy situation, you're not, you don't really want to remove your eyes to look down at your gauges. It's, it's okay if you absolutely need to, but you know, do it quickly. But if you learn to listen to when your engine, t and your engine will tell you when it needs to shift, that's gonna be much, much better for you. So, you know, of course, if you lose a gear or if something happens, you have to, you're slowing way down, let's say you slow from 55 down to 35, you know, yeah, you're probably gonna need to look down at that tachometer, but in general, as you're progressing through your shifting range up and down, you're just really, you're just gonna to wanna to listen to that engine. And something to help you with your downshifting, this is to understand that every gear has a gate. And what I mean by that is like, let's take eighth gear is eighth or even third is really, really easy to understand because you just, when the, usually, when the gear shift is at rest, you just pull it directly straight back and that's going to, you know, that's third or eighth gear. Now, when you pull it back just barely, okay, that means that the, the shifter is technically in the slot for third or eighth gear, and this applies to all gears, but when it's in the slot, however, it's not in gear yet, that's called being in the gate. And as you're shifting and the RPMs are moving, and this is especially helpful, like I said, when you're downshifting, if you get that gear into gate just slightly, you cannot put a lot of force on it, you cannot pull hard on it, push hard on it, otherwise you're gonna grind the gears. You're, you're gonna be, you're gonna hear just a very, very slight rubbing, and I'm probably gonna get some hate in the comments saying that you shouldn't do that, but I 100% disagree with that. You know, rubbing the gears is not that, is, is not that bad. It's not going to hurt anything. You're not gonna do any damage. So if you learn to just barely slide it into the gate, and then your RPMs, especially when you're downshifting, it's going to, whenever you reach that, per, that correct RPM range to put it into gear, it's going to fall into gear. You're going to, when you, the first time you do it, you're gonna know exactly what I'm, gonna, what I'm talking about because it's literally going to just pull it into gear. It's gonna fall into gear for you. So if you learn to master the gate, then you're gonna be a much better shifter. And as you're learning to be a better shifter, while you're learning, I do not recommend that you leave the engine brake on. Now, as you get more advanced, you become better at it. You know, you're not missing gears anymore. You're able to get down the road efficiently. Then you might want to learn how to just leave the jake brakes on while you're shifting. And it's going to be different, you know, it, and all trucks may not be able to do this. Uh, I know I've, I've driven an International Pro Star, I've driven a Freightliner Cascadia, and I've driven a Kenworth T660. And all of those times I, I was able to leave the jakes on, but it is a learning experience and you're going to have to learn how to shift like that, but it can cause havoc, especially if you're double clutching. If you're double clutching, just turn the jakes off or the engine brake because it's just gonna mess you up. Uh, but as you're learning to shift and you're getting better at it and you're not double clutching anymore, you're floating gears, well then you can learn to leave that jake brake on and you're gonna be in good shape. But until that point, just leave them off. And lastly, and this is, this is kind of common sense, but at the same time it was never explained to me this way. When you are going uphill and you're shifting, the RPMs are going to drop faster. So that means that you'll need to shift a little bit faster in order to get into gear properly. Or if you're sitting at it on uphill, like you're at a light and you're uphill and you're heavy and you normally start off in second gear, well, you may have to start off in first gear. So if you're killing it a lot, like the engine is dying on you when you're pulling out, you know, you're pulling out the clutch to try to take off, well, that means that there's not enough power that's going into where it needs to be in order to get you moving. And the engine's like, no more. <laughs> so when you're going uphill, or excuse me, when you're sitting at, a, at an uphill, you know, try using a lower gear to take off, or when you're shifting, when you're going uphill, the RPMs are gonna drop faster, so you're gonna to need to, sh to shift a lot faster. And the same, well, the opposite applies when you're going downhill. Those RPMs are gonna drop slower. And 
a lot of schools I know will teach you not to shift while you're going down like a mountain grade. And I, I do believe that. Here's a, here's a little bonus tip for you. Whatever gear it took to climb that hill, then you wanna use one less going down the other side. And yeah, you're gonna be going slow, but better safe than sorry when you're really, really new and you're trying to learn this. Uh, but as, as you're going downhill, like on a slightly less uh, decline, you know, you're not flying down cabbage or Donner, then understand that your RPMs are gonna drop a lot slower and you're going to be shifting slower and it's gonna take less RPMs whenever you're downshifting. So if you actually have to downshift on a downswing, you're not gonna have to rev that engine up nearly as much as you would if you know, you're just on flat land. But something else to keep in mind is if you master the gate, then you're going to be a much better downshifter because those gears, you're gonna, you're gonna understand how much pressure it takes to put on that accelerator to get the engine tire where it just falls right into place. And I promise you, if you apply these seven tips and maybe even a little bonus tip, that you're going to be a much better shifter. But if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. It does help out the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, but you know, check out that video right over there. And that is my shifting video where I explain two things. You explain how to shift using the tachometer, and then also if you lose a gear. So it's a really good one, check that out. But as always, guys, stay driven.